I bought this lamp the other day at a thrift store for a very reasonable price. And I bought it because I thought it would be a perfect lamp for a wooden lampshade. So I went out to that same big pile of wood that I showed you in the last video and chose a nicely proportioned log and then trimmed it down to size. And the next step is to find center on one of the ends and attach a faceplate. I turned so many bowls, it's kind of fun occasionally to get some different tools out and use them. I haven't used this uh, spindle roughing gouge in a long time. It really is the perfect tool for this job. Just peels off that wood and ribbons. Just an absolute pleasure to use. almost like ticker tape. I got this down to round pretty quickly, as you can see here, but I still had some more reducing to do just to get rid of the bark. I want to eliminate the bark because it's my intent to make this lampshade as clear as possible, just highlighting the uh, grain in the wood. No bark or anything extra, except for, you know, the occasional little knot or whatever appears. And here I'm just making the base of the lampshade uh, as flat as possible. And to clarify, what you're looking at, uh, the end that I'm working on is going to be the bottom end of the lampshade. So I need to also cut it to size to fit within the, uh, the lampshade bracket that's already part of the lamp. As you can see here, I switched tools. This is a 5 8 bowl gouge. I figured I'd give it a try just for shaping. Uh, but I could not get any shavings to come off of this, this chunk of wood with that tool, so I went back to the spindle gouge. And you can see why. All right, let's take a look at what some subscribers have made. Brianna Fogg made these. Can you believe she's only got five months experience? These are absolutely gorgeous. Great job, Brianna. 
So nice. Joshua Collins made this. This is a gorgeous bowl. Figured maple and purple heart. Nice work, Joshua. Four-legged furry friends. Some of the best we'll ever have. I'm sorry for your loss, Mark. That's a beautiful urn. As always, I want to take the time to give a special shout out to my subscribers. Thank you for supporting my channel just by that simple click of a button. It makes a world of difference and I appreciate your support. Stick around until after the Semper Fi on this video. My friend and longtime subscriber Gabriel sent me some M&Ms to see how many I could fit in that tulip bowl. So we're going to give it a try. Uh, the tailstock isn't up and supporting right now because it's already a very narrow, tight spot and, and it just would have been in the way. But since this piece is mounted onto the lathe with a faceplate using eight screws, I'm feeling very confident that this, this piece isn't going to fly off the lathe if I get a bad check or something like that. So I tried three different bowl gouges just to find the one that seemed to be best suited for getting all this wood out of the middle of this lampshade, hollowing out this log. And it seemed like the 45 degree and 40 degree bevel were best suited for the shear scraping that I ended up doing. Instead of working down the end grain from the outside in, it was easier to work the side grain from the inside out, if that makes sense. Once I got most of it out, I started working on the, uh, the final profile of this lampshade. Beautiful shavings. And again, this is my uh, three quarter inch bowl gouge with the 40 degree bevel. worked out nicely for me. This would actually make a very nice looking pedestal bowl as it is right here. But my goal for the shape of this is just a actually a really simple dome. Uh, which will work well on that lamp. It's just going to soften the area around the light bulb and allow the lamp to still cast good light. What I'm doing here is I've got the basic shape that I want, so what I have to do is get it nice and thin. And the best way to gauge how thin it is, aside from calipers, is to put a light right up against the wood and make the light nice and even all the way through. Something interesting right off the bat here. You can see that bright white LED light bulb I'm using. You can see the color of the, the wood, but look at the color of the light shining through. I mean, it's red. Amazing. So the light is positioned in one spot and... I'll shave off a little wood here and shave off a little wood there. Ultimately get this shade down to about one eighth inch. All the way around the curves. Even all the way through. Base all the way to the top.
Now the light helps me make things even, but the calipers assure me that I'm not going too thin. So it's just, just a way of double checking that I'm on the right track here. Now here I know I still have to shave some wood off of the top of this dome and it's much easier and more controlled doing so from the outside with a better tool rest, better angles, so that's what I chose to do here instead of uh, reaching way inside. There you go, you can see how that light's shining through a little bit better each pass. Look at the color of that. That is so amazing to me. I just can't believe a, a nice clear almost white colored wood would produce such a beautiful reddish orange flame of a color real happy with that getting her nice and thin Just going to take a little bit more off the top. Parting this off is a little scary. You can see me jump there, but it worked okay. Worked out real nice. Off camera, I sanded the top of that dome down to 500 grit, just like the sides. I just thought a nice coating of walnut oil would be nice for this. I didn't want it to be shiny. A little bit understated, perhaps. But still protected. And here's the original look of this lamp. And the new look. You see the different colors in there because of the the curves of the piece but it's even throughout even up on top where the color isn't coming through that's just because of that uh, end grain for whatever reason it's just blocking the light but look at that look at that color it looks like a red hair or fire so pretty let me know what you think.
Thanks for watching, but stick around for more. Semper Fi. Gabriel thought this was a four bagger. M&M's that is. We're getting ready to find out because I think he sent me some. Thanks, Gabe. I don't know. I think we're going to call that good. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Alright, well there you have it. That's 42 ounces. 2 pounds, 10 ounces of M&M's in the tulip bowl. Courtesy of Gabe. Semper Fi, brother. Rangers lead the way. No wonder who that was. <laughs>